so James Cameron has come out and, and said in several different interviews that he doesn't understand this entire submersible situation, basically saying that, you know, the search was completely unwarranted the second they lost contact with it. It's very obvious the first place they should have checked is right where it ended up being, which was the debris field right under where it imploded. It only makes sense if something goes missing, the last known location is where you should check rather than doing basically what they did, which is running around, you know, driving boats all over the place, hoping to find them, go down to the surface, and, you know, people are saying the U.S. Navy... All the experts knew immediately on Sunday afternoon that this thing completely imploded. That's what they're all saying. It only makes sense. The U.S. Navy could have said something on Sunday night and this would be a basically a complete non-story. It does strike me that this turned into, I would say, one of the bigger stories of 2023 because the story itself is just not relatable. What normal person is going to spend $250,000 to go look at the Titanic, you know, so far below the Atlantic Ocean? It just doesn't make any sense. Why is this such a big story? And that brings us to the speculation. Is this a distraction? You know, obviously they didn't know this was going to happen. They didn't know the implosion was going to happen, but it is extremely coincidental, I guess you could say, that Hunter Biden, that whole thing comes out where he pleads guilty to a deal that likely averts him time behind bars. You know what? It it is funny with Hunter Biden. You you get all these people talking about white privilege. You want to know the definition of white privilege? If you really want to talk about it, Hunter Biden is white privilege. There's your white privilege right there. But it's funny how they never bring that up because no, they need to protect Hunter Biden because he's on their team. But yeah, this whole thing completely reeks. It doesn't make any sense. It, it's the super convenience of the biggest story of the year or one of the biggest stories of the year and them slipping this big political news in America when in reality you've got experts like James Cameron who admits that he's probably spent more time on the Titanic than the original captain based on how many missions they've had down there so he knows what he's talking about. Uh, He comes out and says, this is ridiculous. You know, any expert could tell you that on Sunday, they would have known the thing imploded. And then the speculation is, why didn't they tell anyone? Not only did they not tell anyone, this became a a, a huge, huge thing. A running story for four straight days around the clock coverage. And of course, all the news organizations love it because they're going to get more views, of course. Titanic director James Cameron on the catastrophic implosion. I'm struck by the similarity of the Titanic disaster itself where the captain was repeatedly warned about the ice ahead of his ship, yet he steamed at full speed into the ice field. Some people thinking that quote means he's going to be making a second Titanic. Wouldn't that be something? But uh, So if you've got James Cameron saying this whole thing makes no sense, it's a big charade, the entire search was ridiculous, the last known point of it was an hour 40 below, because that's the other thing that didn't really add up, it was, oh, they lost contact about an hour 40 down, well, theoretically, wouldn't that be the first place you start looking when it goes an hour 40 down, and then there's wreckage and, and debris all on the bottom, Now they're saying because of the depth of the debris, they couldn't get a submarine there fast enough. It took a few extra days, but that still begs the question, if the intelligence knew on Sunday night, virtually right when this happened, that yeah, this is an implosion, what is the whole charade of going four days, of of, of misleading the public? It really is shocking. Remember I said... I think on Tuesday when I did the first video on this, I said, look, it looks like an implosion. I said it probably imploded like the stern. Some people argue the stern didn't implode, but either way, I called the implosion. That's exactly what happened. Other people were saying, oh, it's at the surface somewhere bobbing above the water. But if, you know, you would think 
the only logical thing, well, I guess you could say it loses power and, and then something happens to it, but the only logical thing would be about an hour 40 down, you know, a, an implosion and a total loss of life at that point. And the other thing that people have to understand about this whole Titan event, in the, in the grand scheme of things, this event is completely meaningless. Again, who is spending $250,000 to go to the bottom of the ocean? You know, obviously this is something that happened to where if you want to run a conspiracy about it, you've got this stuff on Sunday, you get the news and you say, listen, we've got some things we want to release or get done. Let's make this a big, big time story throughout the entire week and have it blaring over everything. That seems like something that could possibly happen, especially if the Navy said on Sunday, look, I, I mean, listen, how many context clues do we need? It goes down about an hour 45. It loses all communications. The Navy hears a loud boom in the same spot. Oh my goodness, I wonder what it is. Let's search on the surface for it. That makes complete sense. And then let's run a big charade and mislead the public when we hear some weird bangs. Although, you actually look into it. That happens a lot of times in the ocean. It is normally never what they're searching for. Uh, when it comes to those loud bangs. So the whole thing completely rakes, and I'm just shocked this story ended up as big as it was. Certainly, does it even have to, it, it's not even technically a tight, I guess it's a Titanic story, but not really. I mean, you know, it, it's really not involving, like the ship didn't even make it to the Titanic. It was going there, and about halfway down, or about three-fourths of the way down, they figure it imploded and the Ocean Gate company, I mean, what is going to happen to them? They're going to get sued and sued and sued, even with, you know, the passengers signing the all the waivers, all the different things. There is a problem. There were some corners that were cut when it comes to the way the submersible was made. And James Cameron talked about that. Other experts have talked about that. It's not spherical. And... It also has some issues with carbon fiber hull. That's the thing that imploded. Even if you want to play devil's advocate and say, look, there's very few submarines that can go that depth. They were waiting to, you know, ship it there and get the submarine down to find, you know, the debris. Why mislead the public for four days? And, and why was it such a huge story? It, it is a strange, strange situation. I mean, I just cannot understand with something like this to where... It seems very obvious, you know, it's not like you're endangering the public by telling them we have a very good idea on what happened to this on Sunday night. Let's let them know because the U.S. Navy has the technology to where they picked up a detection. I'm struggling to understand why you wouldn't tell the public on Sunday night and that leads to speculation on oh, you want to know what happens on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's some other things that happen. People within the U.S. government want a big-time distraction, like, oh, one of the biggest stories of 2023. That, get this, doesn't mean anything. This story, this is not going to change anything at all in terms of our everyday lives, the future, the past. It's just the story of a disaster. That is it. A disaster with very wealthy people that none of us are ever going to ever do. It's like the perfect cover story, is it not? It's amazing. So the whole thing is strange and more and more people are starting to come out and say it. Seems like they knew it imploded on Sunday. All you have to do is use context clues. If you're the U.S. Navy, you could say we heard a loud boom. The likelihood is it imploded. We will continue our search, but uh, to the general public... Yeah, you know, it probably imploded. They didn't do that. They made it this huge thing like, oh, there's five different things that could happen to this thing. Let's all follow it for a week. And that ended up happening. I don't know what the entire, you know, story is on it. Maybe they were just like, we want to be sure. But even if you would be sure, wouldn't you at least tell the general public that, look, we're 95% sure that this thing imploded because right when it lost comms with us, we heard a loud bang in the spot where it was. All right, it doesn't take a, a genius to figure out what probably happened here. Go about your day. We're going to search for it. It's a sad story. Instead, it's like they push this thing and push it and push it and push it and push it. And it's like one of the biggest stories of 2023. 
I don't know. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.